Hey everyone, welcome back. Ah, guys, I wanted to talk about so many other things today, but I just gotta talk about this little phone right here. Because this little phone is pretty much running my life for this whole week. And a lot of you guys that have been a biomed for a while, you know, every once in a while you gotta be on call. So what is it like being on call as a biomed? We're going to talk about that next, coming up, right here on Better Biomed. Yeah, hey, hi. This is uh, Justin from Biomed. I just got a page saying that you guys are having a problem with your vital signs not coming across. Okay. Alright, you've tried everything. Really? And you're not going to help me over the phone. But what if, what if, what if I come up with a solution and you work with me, we just try something out real quick and maybe I can get you up and going in about five minutes. It's not your job, huh? You want me to come in regardless, even though I might be able to get you up and going in five minutes? Okay. Well, I'm just, uh, yeah, okay. Well, I'm, I'm just going to tell you that I, there's a two-hour time before I have to be in there, okay? So, there's rush hour. It's going to take me a little bit. Two hours is unacceptable. You know that... Houston has some of the worst traffic in the country. I'm 30 miles away. It's going to take me a little bit to get there. I'm sorry. I promise I'll do my best. Okay. Really? I hung up. <sighs> Guys, one of the worst things and one of the most interesting things is on call when you're on call that little phone or that pager is gonna run your life middle of the night pages <laughs> I've got so many funny stories from on call I've been called in uh, during Christmas time like right in the middle when we're opening up gifts as a family and uh, I told them I know for a fact that there's a cable behind the patient monitor that's not plugged in it's just dangling there. It's an orange cable. Just trust me. It's there. I know. Yeah, but based on the symptoms that you told me, it's not plugged in. Trust me. You've tried everything. Okay. Huh. Well, if you tried everything, then what am I going to do? <laughs> but, wouldn't you know, I drove all the way in on Christmas, separated from my family, and there was a bright orange Cat5 Ethernet cable dangling from the wall behind the monitor and it wasn't plugged in. Middle of the night, I've gone in because somebody kicked a little power transformer out of the wall. Even though I told them, hey, something's not plugged in under there, get under there. It's not their job. And they made it very clear it's not their job. They've got patience. They would just want me to come in and then threaten to call my supervisor or whatever. Um, so on call is a very tense time. I, it's very unpredictable. You never know what you're going to be doing. Probably one of the funniest and, and craziest situations I ever had on call is I took a buddy's call uh, so that he could go on a motorcycle rally. And uh, <laughs> that night, above the MRI... A little flapper valve on the drain pan of a hot water heater got caught. So the drain pan overflowed and went into my MRI room. And alarms went off. And I had to respond in as the biomed on call. And I spent all weekend mopping the floors and drying out the area so that we could get our MRI back up and going. Because if you guys don't know, MRI rooms are shielded with copper. So you got to get it dry as fast as possible so that all the copper doesn't corrode and maybe you can save yourself a quarter of a million dollars worth of construction project. But uh, 
I have been through some crazy call guys and in so many ways I love being on call at the at the same time like right now I'm on call and I haven't been called in this whole entire week but I'm kind of partial like if I get any type of call tonight whatsoever I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna work all night all night if I if I get a call in like an hour I'm gonna be there all night every, until like 6 or 7 a.m. till my team gets in in the morning and then I'm going to uh, debrief them on what I did and then I'm gonna brief them on what I want them to do for the day and then I'm going home that's if I get called in tonight because um, I have so many ESUs that are mounted on booms and when are you gonna to get to it during the morning throughout the day there's cases being run in the rooms you don't have time to get this stuff but at night so it uh, on call kind of gives me some of those opportunities as an operating room guy to get some of my extra stuff done but uh, there's some stuff that I want to talk to you guys about call because call doesn't have to be a miserable horrible experience but there's some things that you just got to remember when you do call everything that you do affects every other biomed at your facility either in reputation or it affects them because you are setting a precedent if there's something the users are supposed to be doing on their own you have to help guide them towards that ending okay because if you just go in like so many biomeds that love the overtime they just go in for every little thing well they're setting the precedent uh, I had one biomed that would go in and he would make potassium baths for uh, for dialysis patients. I'm like, wait a minute, you're mixing potassium baths whenever they call you up? No, 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 no. That's treating patients. We don't do that. They're supposed to know how to mix their own potassium bath. Not us. Not us. Um, at one of the other hospitals I was at, some of you guys that are watching this know, um, we had to get called in to move a microscope from across the hallway, is down the hall a little bit, there was a room that I didn't even have badge access to. It was an operating room storage room. So only operating room people had access to this room. But what they would do is they would call the uh, on-call guy, he would drive all the way in, he would stand outside this room, call security, have the security guys come down, let him in so he could pull this optical um, emergency operating room microscope out of storage take it over to the operating room front desk and be like here you guys go and then he'd go home they were doing this for years for years guys these guys were going and moving the stupid microscope down the hallway to an operating room gosh darn it guys <laughs> we are here to empower users there's no reason if they get an emergency eye case for the on-call guy to go in and move a microscope. It's not a biomed storage room. If it was a biomed storage room, I would completely understand the need for us to go in. But this, this was an operating room storage room. I didn't even have badge access to. And I had to stand out there and wait for security to let me in. Yet the operating room people, all they had to do is just walk down the hallway to their own room and either badge in or get security to let them in and it would be a five minute affair for me it was an over an hour to drive in find parking in a parking garage walk all the way across the campus which is a big campus guys big mind you this is not my current my current hospital this was a previous one and and this is just the type of stuff that just irritates me for on call on call is for emergencies only but at the same time, on call, it's kind of like you're you're the help desk, okay? It's not necessarily emergent. Somebody needs some help, like, hey, how do I get into this menu on a monitor? They're going to call the on-call phone. And sure, sure, call me up. I don't care. I like talking to you guys anyway. Let's do this. I have no problem. You call me in the middle of the night saying that you need some help with, you know, uh, rebooting the system. Sure, I'll, I'll walk you through. I'll take a half hour if I have to to walk you through because... That means that you're up and running in a half hour versus me driving an hour in, finding your department. It's an hour and a half affair at that point. So guys, on call, is it can be a very rewarding situation if you treat it that way. And at the same time, it can be the bane of your existence. 
And the important thing to remember is on-call is treated differently across every facility. Every single facility does call differently. And it can be very frustrating when, when the on-call people do things like move a microscope. And it just doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? Because you're just setting yourselves up for failure in the future. But remember, guys, treat it as a positive experience. You're going to be tr you're going to be stressed, especially if you're like a biomed two or a biomed one on call. You're going to be stressed uh, because you're going to be put in a position where you're going to be forced to learn something very quickly. I've met some of the coolest people ever on call. I really have. I've gone in for telemetry systems, and I chill half the night while I'm rebuilding Philips servers. You know, chilling with the people that are doing telemetry. We were having a good old laugh. But uh, at the same time, you know, it can be very stressful because that's when you honestly figure out how stupid some people are. And some of you guys are going to laugh at that, but it's true. It is absolutely true. You can literally tell somebody there's a cable not plugged in. I know it's orange. How many orange cables are there in this world? Not too many, right? They say, nope. It's definitely plugged in. I definitely checked that. You drive in, and magically, there's an orange cable floating from the wall right next to the monitor, and, huh, there's two ends of the cable, and one of them is not connected to something. How crazy. You really find out how stupid some people are. And that's, I mean, there's, I don't like using that word too much, but honestly, how else do you put it? Um, maybe it's ignorance. Is it really ignorance? Because you can see the cable. I mean, it's it's laziness. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't tolerate laziness too well, people. So if that offends you, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, on call is is a very intense situation. You never know what's going to come in, and sometimes it's a crazy, crazy stuff. You're going to be away from your family some holidays, but that's just a part of the job is being on call and responding you're gonna have some of the craziest phone conversations with some fun people you're gonna have that old nurse that needs to retire you're gonna have her she's gonna say it's not my job and hang up the phone on you I've been hung up on many times all right and it honestly I really like talking to people so when I when I call somebody up this is just like you seen earlier it's 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 a conversation you know and and usually people enjoy the fact that you're gonna sit there and you're gonna try and help them Last night, I had a call with a nurse in a NICU. That's a neonate intensive care unit. So it's a pretty intense environment as it is because, you know, you're talking about little babies that are just completely helpless. But uh, she sat there, and, and I walked her through step by step, and she, she was telling me, I tried everything. And I said, really? I said, are you sure you tried everything? Because uh, I might have a trick or two that you don't know about yet. And I told her to pull the power cord on uh, the GE patient monitor. And she said she already hit the button on the front and to shut it off and rebooted it. And pulling the power cord is different than hitting the cute little button on the front because the power cord is a hard reset. Whereas on some items, pushing the power button on the front is a soft boot, okay? That means a lot of, a lot of settings, a lot of a lot of parameters like maybe patient data is stored in memory but when you yank that power cord that's gone so I had her yank the power cord I talked her through it and uh, sure enough it popped back up it said would you like to load the parameters from the patient module and I told her no do not do that if it's not connecting because there's something wrong with the patient parameters start again it admit from fresh you know type in the patient name put the patient identifier everything start from scratch she typed it all in and when you know it it connected right up found the patient started transmitting to Cerner which is the uh, digital medical record and everything started working beautifully so and she was very thankful and I'll tell you what that was that was such a pleasant conversation you know uh, just walking her through step by step she thanked me and then at the very end she says I might have to remember those tricks to my for my uh, bag of tricks and I said all right you do that because we all learn something from each other we really do and uh, it was just one of those quaint little experiences two people talking on a phone you know helping each other out but uh, when, when you have customers that are willing to work with you it makes it a very pleasurable experience but every once in a while 
You just have to keep your cool and understand that people are going to be rude to you. They're going to want you to come in regardless because they think miraculously you have parts for everything. <laughs> so sometimes I have to tell them, hey, I'm, I'm just telling you, I have no parts for that anyway. So if you have to move a patient from that room to another room, then go ahead because I don't have spare equipment. We don't keep spares. And I don't have parts. So if I have to order parts anyway, you're not, you're not going to have it anyway. So just telling you. And sometimes you just got to inform them that way, like, hey, it's a chance that I'm going to help you. I'm going to do the best I can, but it's still a chance, all right? So, guys, on-call phone. It's going to be a part of your career. If you're OEM, if you're in-house, if you're contracted, whatever, these little guys right here are going to be part of your life once a month, once every two, three months, usually at a week at a time on call it's part of our career and just treat it as a positive experience and learn as much as you can from it because the smarter you are as a biomed the easier call is going to be if you're an ignorant biomed and you just go in for every little thing you're going to be miserable and your, your customers are going to be miserable because it's something you could have helped them out with over the phone all right long drawn out video about call Thanks for watching.